Hello there. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Jedi Knights. This is episode 19. I'm your moderator, Christian Buckley, joined by my Chewy, Mike Connors. I wish I could do a Chewy impression. <laughs> I, if I try to do it right now, it would just sound really bad. Yeah? Yeah, we would lose all of our audio listeners. Okay, we can hold off on that later. Yeah. Maybe in the second half of the show. Maybe if you're feeling daring later. Yeah, it's a Patreon exclusive, actually. <laughs> uh, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing all right. Thanks for asking. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Just uh, trying to be courteous. Oh, thanks, Mike. So we're <laughs> kicking off the show this week with a new opening segment. Um, we already used the name Star Words for our little game we tried like twice. Yeah, I wasn't very good at that game. My brain doesn't work fast enough. So I'm suggesting a reboot of that segment. Okay. Star Words is still the title. Sure. But via my sister this Christmas, <laughs> I got a Star Wars Mad Libs book. And I'm pretty sure there's enough pages in here for however long this run of the show is going to be. What's your sister's name? Samantha. Thank you, Samantha. Yes, thank you, Sam. Saving us. Um, so we're going to play Star Wars Mad Libs. All right. Let's you, do it. You're going to give me all the all the, all the the words because you're a words man. Uh, I, okay. We could try. A wordsmith. A wordsmith, you say. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to do all of them. We, we could, we could okay, collaborate okay. with this. We okay. could collaborate with this. Uh, give me an adjective. Um, burly. Burly. Okay. Was that an adverb? Bur no, bur like uh, All right. a burly man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, plural not pur plural noun. Um, carrots. A noun. Uh, monitor. Monitor. Okay. Another adjective. Um, soft. Soft. Part of the body. <laughs> uh, ear. Ear. Another adjective. Ooh, let's think. Think of an adjective with me here. Uh, an adjective? Yeah. Yellow. Y yellow? Okay. That's an adjective, right? Sure, yeah. <laughs> okay. Things can be yellow. Plural noun. Um, chairs. Chairs. That's not because I just looked at a chair, and that's the first thing that came to my mind. Okay, hit me with another part of the body. Uh, ooh, pinky toe. Pinky like the toe. small, the small toe. All right, another adjective. Um, pleasant. Pleasant, okay. Um, an adverb. Um, quickly. Quickly, another noun. What about tree? Tree. Uh, a part of the body, plural. Uh, hands. Hands. And lastly, an adverb. Um... Hurriedly. Hurriedly. Is that a word? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> think, let's think of another adverb. An adverb. Um, I think that is a word, but I don't know. Consistently. Consistently. Okay. All right. That was good. All right. So now I'm going to read through this little passage called The Power of the Force. <laughs> All right. Great. Let's do it. Um, should I do my best to be the, the Clone Wars guy? Oh, like from the beginning of the episode? Yeah, it's probably going to be bad. You should try, but I think it'll make this segment if it works. Yeah, it's like a, it's like the the boys in the in yeah. the European theater. The force is mystical, burly power. Oh, the force is hold on. Oh, the force is a mystical, burly power. As Jedi Master Obi Wan Kenobi once said, "The force is an energy field created by all living carrots that surround us, penetrate us, <laughs> <laughs> and bind the monitor together. Using the power of the force, a Jedi can do many." Soft things like using the force to exercise ear control over wow. yellow minded chairs. A Jedi can also use the force to move objects with his or her pinky toe. It doesn't matter how quick, uh, pleasant these objects are, it only matters how quickly the Jedi believes in the force. Most importantly, the force teaches a Jedi to rely on his or her feelings. As Obi-Wan Kenobi told his student, Luke, tree, <laughs> walker. <laughs> what? Wait, tr Luke tree walker? Luke tree walker. All right. And his father, Anakin, who served in the Clone Wars. Uh, your hands can deceive you. Don't trust them. Instead, a Jedi should consistently trust in the Force. That, well, I mean, that ends on a good note. We'll continue next week. Oh, very good. I think that was a great segment. I feel good about it. Yeah, thank you, Medlibs and... Sam. Yes. It's time to talk some news. Uh, wasn't really a heavy news week. 
No, it's considerably light. Yeah, <laughs> compared yeah, compared to some of our other episodes. Yes, but I feel like there's interesting discussions to be had. Uh, first off, we'll update for y'all and you. You sent this to me, actually. So is it really an update for me? No. <laughs> <laughs> if I sent it to you. Um, there's a full announcement for Project Luminous mm-hmm. coming mm-hmm. February 24th. That's like days away. Like a couple weeks away. <laughs> well, I mean, still those are days. Yeah. Uh, this is via Clayton Sandell, who in his Twitter bio claims to be an ABC correspondent and Star Wars is his side hustle. So I'm trusting him. All right. Sure. Um, ABC, that's a legitimate news source. Yeah. And like they're related to Disney. They're owned by Disney. Oh, true. Right? It's, it's Wait, ABC. It's yeah. not CBS. Wait, what is... Disney doesn't own Big Bang ABC, Theory. you're right. Yeah, okay. Okay, so so the mouse cuts that guy's check, so I don't believe him anymore. I, well, I mean, like, why would he be spreading, like, misinformation about his All employer? Right. Maybe not misinformation, but I'm skeptical. Okay. Uh, I did see also that other Star Wars podcasts do follow him. So I was like, okay, we'll take it. All right. Well, For the sake what? of conversation, we'll take it. I don't know. All right. I don't know his background, so I'm sure he's a great journalist. Um, So according to one of his tweets... Project Luminous is, and he very clearly emphasized this, a publishing effort to sell a big interconnected story arc Mm -hmm. within Star Wars. This is conflicting with the reporting of Jason Ward Ward, that we talked about previously on this show about Project Luminous being kicked off by a video game, intertwining between TV, movies, comics, books to craft this new Marvel-like narrative within Star Wars set in the High Republic era. So, that's where we're starting here. There's a little more information. Again, he reiterates no TV, films, games involved. And he did tease that on the 24th, we'll learn about the characters and the era. Mm -hmm. So, like, with that in mind... I'm still believing in the High Republic news, especially because I hear in some recent Star Wars comics, they're mentioning the High Republic. They are. They mentioned it, I believe, in the new Kylo Ren Mm -hmm. um, comic book. But yeah, it doesn't necessarily pour water over the the High Republic news. It's that's still possible. Yeah. Um, It's also possible, like, what are the chances that this Project Luminous takes place in the same the same time period but they're just different stories is that possible that's very possible like i could totally see a scenario based on just the literal words that both of these people have been saying that films games movies sorry film games tv and then the comics and the books both take place in the high republic but are dealing with two different narratives that's what i would assume is going to happen i think it would be too confusing for disney to be like Oh, for the books and the comics, like this is taking place in this era of mm-hmm. Star Wars universe. Yeah. And then for the movies and the TV shows, it's totally different. Yeah. That would be like a, a huge disconnect. I'm not sure. Like it's still possible though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's like a big ask, I think, of your audience. I think personally. It is. Yeah. Because like Marvel doesn't even do that. You know, Marvel started in comic books and they're not tying anything that has to do with the MCU to comics or books. Right. There's, like, prequel comics and, like, advertising comics, but, like, I wouldn't say anything that's, like, necessary required reading to understand what's going on in Endgame. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're even branching out to film se- or TV series on Disney+, Plus, and there was a little bit of pushback there from some fans of Marvel. But, like, yeah, even their, like, cable TV shows aren't really canon. Right. No, it's true. <laughs> so to think that Star Wars would take the approach of, like, like, sure, it's different in the fact that everything for them already is canon, but, like, integral pieces of the story, it's it seems a bit, like we were saying, like a tall order for your audience. Yeah, and I think it would be even more of a tall order if they were, like, two completely different eras at two completely different times. Yeah. Like, that would just get really confusing. Yeah, and I, I will push back there a little bit with the exception of some of the remnants of the Skywalker saga that we're exploring still. Okay, yeah. With what's going to be going on here. But that, I'm assuming, is going to be mostly put onto Disney+. Plus. 
Do you think we're going to get like a like a Ray Disney Plus TV show? I don't know. I really don't know because like I was reading more rumors and this is like right now pure speculation. People think that Project Luminous could just flesh out the sequel trilogy characters. I would be a little bummed. Yeah, that would be annoying. As much as I want to see Finn train to become a Jedi in any medium. Yeah. And I'll happily read that story or watch that plot. I I'm I don't need it right now, you well, know. Didn't like one of these tweets say that there were going to be like th- this event that's happening in February are going to introduce us to characters and mm-hmm. stuff. So I'm thinking maybe they'll just be different. I hope so. I would that's I hope this is, takes place in a different time with different characters, mm-hmm. something new. Yeah, I mean I 100% agree. Yeah. Because I feel like the resources for Star Wars, like, they have to manage them well. It can't be oversaturated. So, like, if there's going to be a considerable push for something, you can't, like, have your cake and eat it, too. You know, like, you can't be exploring the sequel trilogy cast while also trying to set up the next era simultaneously. That's a lot of Star Wars. It is. And, like, people like us would be happy, but I can guarantee you... fine with me. (laughs) I can guarantee you if we get, like, a Finn book... A higher public book and um, another Be- young Ben Solo book, all in like the span of one year. I might read one of those, right? Yeah. You know, that's why I want to see something like like I want them to have like an I- like an idea set out from the mm-hmm. beginning and like an overarching story that they want to tell. And from reports, that seems like Project Luminous is that. Yeah, and that that you know, I'm happy that those are the reports that are coming out because it's, that's exactly what I want to see. Me too. Um, because there are some really talented writers in that in the Star Wars uh, employed by Disney right now. Mm-hmm. Um, e. K. Johnson. Uh, who? Wait. What's What's the person's name who wrote the Leia books? Claudia remember? Gray. Claudia Gray. I believe. I think she wrote Aftermath and then also the Leia Bloodline book or whatever yeah, it was called. Right. right. Charles Soule. Yes, Vader, uh, yeah. Rise of Kylo Ren. I'm sure he could write like a book, book if he wanted to. Mm-hmm. And there is a list of authors attached already, and we did name a few of them on a previous episode. But I am looking forward to seeing how they present this and the direction it's going to take. Yeah, me too. I'm excited to see whatever, what a press conference or whatever is going to happen. For sure, because I, going along with the, this current run of our podcast, I'm very interested in like dipping my feet into the new like expanded universe because i've rarely done that in the past yeah no i just so if they announce like this story that they're going to tell over like books and comics and all that kind of stuff are you going to try to try to make your way in that are you going to start reading some star wars books if it's a brand new fresh start yeah 100 percent. cool if it's dealing with stuff we're already familiar with I might be like, I might pick and choose, you know? Sure. So if it is sequel era, I might be like, okay, I'll read this Kylo Ren book about like Ben Solo's training as a Jedi. Maybe I'll get to the Poe thing later if people say it's good enough. Maybe I'll read about Ray's new apprentice later on down the line. But like, and like probably a Finn book. I would absolutely read a Finn book. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but like, sure. if it is a High Republic era, if this is a new territory and it's like, this is everything. So, like, you get a new book from the perspective of a smuggler in this era, and that's your introduction. Hell yeah, I'm absolutely there. Because I'm going to be experiencing this new thing with everybody, and it's, a like, what I think movies and games usually do pretty well. is like they constantly give you good hopping on points. Right. But I do think with literary works, it is harder to have hopping on points. This is uh, such, like, an interesting way that Disney's trying to get people into their whole, like book ecosystem and stuff yeah because like like honestly like going back to what we were saying before with the idea that they'd be two separate entities of like what stories they're telling in the same era mm-hmm. i feel like taking that approach like you're gonna hit who you want to hit because realistically if we want to talk like the mainstream channel of storytelling for the new era of star wars i feel like you'll get the most eyes on what uh, Sandell was saying they're not doing. So movies, TV, and games. Because not many people read. <laughs> no, true. But I think this is this might be a way to get people to move into that. Yeah, I haven't read a ton lately, and I used to love reading. So like, if this gives me a new avenue, I'll <laughs> happily jump in. Is that Disney's 
plan all along is just to get us back, uh, just get people into reading. There could be worse things, you know? I guess so. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see what, what happens. I predict something. I predict that there's going to be a book mm -hmm. before, like, June. That would be very exciting. I've got a feeling that they've just, like, have something ready. I mean, I feel like they probably have to in a certain way. Like, not necessarily have to, but Rise of Skywalker was December. They owned a lot of the conversation in January, positive or negative. Yeah. And then February, we're getting season seven of Clone Wars. So right now you have people, like, catching up on Clone Wars like us. Mm -hmm. You have the good vibes of, like, a very positive fan base for Clone Wars excited to see the next chapter and then you're riding that wave to celebration right so i feel like they're like they're gonna keep this train going and they don't want to repeat what my memory of star wars after revenge of the sith was of like oh is it over <laughs> yeah no they don't want that to happen yeah and maybe june is a little optimistic i don't really know how publishing schedules work or anything so that was just a complete guess but definitely something by like the fall yeah, I, I hope there is. Yeah, so. Um, you know what else happened this week? <laughs> what else happened this week? Well, you know, because I sent it to you. Uh, I'm sure this is how, this is every news thing. Yeah. You're like, hey, you know what happened this week? I do. Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> Star Wars Underworld. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember a time before Disney bought Star Wars? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let me tell you, I remember back in the day reading about Star Wars news online and people kept saying, oh, George Lucas is working on yeah. this bold new direction. It's going to be the first live action Star Wars TV series. It's going to be dark. It's about the underground. And then it just faltered. Yeah, it just never happened. I remember that too. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember specifically there was an IMDb page with like one piece of information on it. I think it said director or producer George Lucas. So like... It was a lot of hearsay. Yeah. But this week we saw test footage. Alleged test footage. Sure. Sure. It has not been confirmed yet. Yeah. It did seem pretty convincing to me. Oh, yeah. No, totally. Like but they were on a sound stage. It looked like with a green screen that no, was yeah. too tall for a amateur production. I'm, I'm saying like, let's just put that caveat out there. Yes. We don't want to feed into the, the hype too much. Yeah. We got to be responsible. Got to be responsible. Um, so there's about like a 10 ish minute video showing behind the scenes footage, some concept footage. Well, it's like half of it is behind it is like the test footage. Mm -hmm. It starts off with the test footage. Mm -hmm. Then the latter half of it is like the production mm -hmm. of it. Very interesting. You could probably find it very easily if you wanted to look it up before we dive in on it. Yeah. It's, in, it's on YouTube. Yeah. Um, so you watched the whole thing. I did. And you sent me a Google Doc sort of fleshing out a little bit more information about this. Right. Um, as we talked about last week with uh, the Trevorrow cut of Episode 9. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Trevor, Trevorrow version of Episode 9, not cut. Duel of the Fates. Duel of the Fates. Um, I, like, it, it's going to be a fun thing to talk about, you know? Yeah. Like what could have been. Like like I said in that, that how do you say his last name? Trevorrow? Trevorrow, whatever. You know what I'm talking <laughs> about. Like I said in that discussion last week. Yeah. Uh, not to, not to uh, we, can't, we can't feed into the hype too much. Right. Because it's not happening. And it's not going to come back. I can see it be repurposed conceptually. Right. Because what Star Wars Underworld was, it's going to be the first live action Star Wars TV series. It was in production... Or, like, pre-production, I guess. Uh, between 2009, 2007 to 2010. And the footage they showed was the underground of Coruscant with some stormtroopers mm -hmm. uh, patrolling the streets. Very filthy-looking streets. <laughs> very some, dirty Star Wars. Got some, you know, people selling stuff. Some, some death sticks. Some aliens selling stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's definitely a cool like tone piece they're putting out there. It's definitely like prequels vibey in a way. Yeah, <laughs> but like it has more grit to it. I feel like than most of the prequels did. Yeah, it's definitely yeah a little darker looking. 
And according to the description of this YouTube video, this series was going to tie in to Star Wars 1313, which was the Boba Fett origin game that took place in Coruscant, layer 1313. Well, like this Google Doc, this aforementioned Google Doc, it had uh, some of like the story structure, not not story structure, but some points to it. Mm -hmm. Han Solo was supposed to be in it. Chewbacca was supposed to be in it. Um, There's supposed to be some scenes of Boba Fett like beating people up. Mm -hmm. Really would like to see that. <laughs> Boba Fett doesn't do anything in the movies. Yeah, he sucks. But yeah, it's just interesting that it was supposed to be with this game that were, people were extremely excited about back in the day. Yeah, it was Star Wars Uncharted. Yeah, because because they made it sound like it was going to happen. Yeah. And it didn't. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, like, obviously there's a lot of canceled Star Wars projects throughout its history. Right. Um, like the Darth Maul one, too. Yeah. But it's, al about that. <laughs> it's always exciting to see things that, like, had some progress done pop up. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you, in the era of Disney+, Plus, where a lot of the focus for the near future of the series seems to be on exploring the Skywalker saga through short series. Would you like, I'm assuming you'd obviously want to see this come back in a certain capacity. I think it's an interesting concept. Yeah, for sure. And I'm becoming, I'm starting to realize more and more that star Wars is like, it does really well on TV. Yeah. Like it's kind of just like made for TV in mm -hmm. a way. Um, and there's no reason why like, Disney can't put out like a bunch of little seasons, like two se like or a bunch of little series, two seasons each mm -hmm. about things that happen in the Skywalker saga. Yeah. This would be a very interesting thing to just like shove in there between episodes three and four. Mm -hmm. Like what happened to these unnamed characters? Like, yeah, I think it's totally possible because we already see them sort of stepping in that direction with the Mandalorian, with the Mandalorian, just in yeah. a different era. It is literally kind of the same. Yeah. So I want to ask so. you this. Do you think, again, this is getting super hypothetical right now. Yeah. Um, both of us would like to see a follow-up to the underrated, uh, fantastical <laughs> solo a Star Wars story. Yeah, I would love to see that. I think I feel like I know where you're... Okay. Okay. A lot of the conversation that I've heard people on other podcasts talk about or just online would love to see Solo 2 occur through a Disney Plus series. Mm-hmm. And obviously, spoilers for the end of Solo, uh, they tee up the Crimson Dawn, right? That was the name of that faction? That's like, yeah, that's the thing that like Kira's in, like Darth Maul and stuff. Yeah, and then like the gang war but with the huts and everything that they were like teasing at the end of that film. Yeah, yeah. Big, big shot gangster putting together a crew. Yes. Yeah. Would you like to sort of see... What happens, or like the vibe, I guess they're going for with under, underworld, mm -hmm. sort of have some of those concepts brought into a follow up for Solo. Maybe it's like an eight episode season, deals with the follow up to the cliffhanger of Solo, and some of the ideas that we saw here. I want to know what happens at the end of like, like Solo didn't really give much resolution. No, like it let a lot of things kind of just it's like, like you know what happens. <laughs> yeah, but like no, we don't know what happens yeah. like to any of this. But yeah, uh, yeah, I think I think it would be best served not again through a movie because they wouldn't make money off of that. <laughs> what they would make money off of is a series. And even before The Mandalorian came out, I thought that it would work pretty good as a TV show. Um, and I think it still does. He still could. Mm -hmm. um, Alden Ehrenreich needs a second chance. Yeah. He needs a second chance hard. Yeah. Because he's really, really talented. For sure. Um, and also, just from the nature of the movie itself, like, it's just a big heist movie. I feel like you can miniaturize that. Absolutely. Well. Yeah. yeah. Um, the one, But I wouldn't want it to last super long. I would want it to have, like, a clear end goal. Yeah. Like I do with all of these series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Because from what we saw here... In these leaks, it did seem like a show that could have gone on for a very long time. Yeah. yeah. And while I'm with you, I don't think that we're going to get the revival of this show, how it was originally intended to be. I could definitely see the concepts work their way into other pieces of media. I think it already has. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Mandalorian <laughs> is evidence of that. You're right. Yeah. So. 
Um, speaking of Mandalorian, we do have finally some merchandise <laughs> okay. coming this uh, coming soon. You see this thing? It's I'm pretty sure I don't know how they designed it, but it is the closest looking Baby Yoda that I have seen to the show. I have not seen this. Well, it is honestly I wouldn't be surprised if they took the original mold and just mass produced it because really? it looks identical aside from the fact that it looks lifeless because it's not moving. So like is it a plush? Like is it a, like, I think a... it's like the same materials they used to make it pretty much. Oh, okay. So it's just a replica. Kind of, yeah. Do you have a guess for how much it is? No. Uh Over I would say I would say 250. <laughs> my uh, my this is Star Wars and Disney you're talking about. That thing is three hundred fifty dollars. I wasn't so far off. <laughs> yeah, but I did consider it. <laughs> if I'm being you, fully honest, really? is it cool? It's cool. Yeah. How big is it? It's life size. So, well, like a foot tall. Yeah. <laughs> so not really that big. Uh, no, baby. Yoda. That's like normal Yoda. Okay, yeah, that's baby Yoda height. That's probably. baby Yoda height. Yeah. That that only helps for our video watchers. Yeah. The audio listeners, sorry. Audio listeners, Mike put his hand like four feet off the ground right there. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't one foot tall. You're on a Star Wars podcast. I <laughs> think Baby Yoda's four feet tall. Um, Whatever. But yeah, I thought that was a fun little thing. Okay. I would not buy that. <laughs> Unless I had like... What is the lowest price it would have had to be for you to consider? Well, now that I know that it's retailing at 350 I would say if it got down to like 125 I'd snatch it up. <laughs> yeah. I think like 175 would be my cap. Okay. But you got a higher you got a higher number. Than for now I can deal with like a Funko Pop. Right. <laughs> I just want to well, I want a baby Yoda plush. That's what I want. Yeah, I want anything about that thing. Yeah. Uh apparently they sell stuff in Galaxy's Edge right now with baby Yoda already. I'm sure they do. But they probably the next day they <laughs> probably had stuff in Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. Uh this is another little small story that you wanted to bring up to me. And our listeners, um, despite the fact that The Rise of Skywalker is now the lowest critical average on Rotten Tomatoes, behind The Phantom Menace by 1%, and um, that's not, like, saying much, because, you know, the the way Rotten Tomatoes work, it's, like, an, an average of how many people gave a review over 5 out of 10 is yeah. what, so it's not like the right. movie's like a 55 or something. It's right. like that many people said it was a good thing. So do you think that's because like it's like, do you think how divisive do you think this movie is in comparison to the other, the other Star Wars movies? It's tough to say. Cause like if you look at the last Jedi, I'm pretty sure the critical percentage on Rotten Tomatoes is like 92 to 96. And then the audience one is like, probably 30 something <laughs> yeah i was just gonna say do you think that that's indicative of how divisive this movie is i don't know because like with critics and audiences for rise of skywalker i feel like the gap isn't as large like i think the audience score is around the 80s and okay. this is in a, the 50s so it's not as big of a gap but it's like 30 points yeah i, I think it's probably more divisive within the overall fandom yeah based on what i've seen because like i realize even like critics aside of this conversation i realize within the overall star wars fandom i'm part of a pretty small group of people that dearly love the last jedi but i feel like with rise of skywalker i don't think it's a small group of people let me just say that okay okay well like in comparison maybe i don't know all right it's a tricky thing. There's all those bots that were like, hey, Russia. <laughs> yeah. Ru- you know, Vladimir Putin doesn't like The Last Jedi. So really? He, yeah, so he went and uh, changed it on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> I saw, I forget where I was reading this. I think Cantina might have been joking about this, yeah. uh, Cantina Conversations. They were saying, like, uh, because John Boyega is trolling so many Star Wars fans now, it's like, oh, yeah, he's the one that set up the bots because he just wanted to see the discourse go crazy. <laughs> That's funny, yeah. Yeah. Uh, John John Boyega is the king of trolling people, though. Fantastic man. Yeah. Um, follow him on social media if you don't. <laughs> yeah, or you might get really triggered depending on what your views are. <laughs> yeah, Raylo's 
Stay away. Beware. <laughs> um, but yeah, as you can see, pretty slow week for news. Yeah. Well, did we discuss how much money these 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 movies have made? Yeah. So despite that, despite the the Rotten Tomato score, it did make a billion, passed the bill, one point zero five eight billion. Okay. So, which is like half that you gotta assume is probably from the United States, about. Yeah, because I don't think Star Wars does super well internationally right. comparatively to like other franchises. Like Iron Man does like crazy well in uh, China, and China is like a bigger box office than Hollywood at this point. Right. Yeah. So, um, well, I just find it interesting because we were looking at the numbers earlier. Mm-hmm. Force Awakens grossed over like two billion, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, easily the, the the highest grossing Star Wars movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Last Jedi, a little below that. Mm-hmm. Rise of Skywalker, lo- the lowest out of the three. Yeah, and to be fair, it still has a couple weeks left in its theatrical run. But it's not looking good. I, I don't think it'll pr- even pass episode eight. It's kind of sputtering out. Like You lose momentum after a while. Yeah, and um, there is some competition coming up, I guess, to take away... The, the repeat viewings, you know, because uh, mm-hmm. February has, I know this is getting like super inside baseball on how movies work, but it, I like this. Um, February has Birds of Prey, which has very positive buzz from fans right now. Um, Sonic the Hedgehog is coming out. So. I think people are just going to watch that just because, just for the meme. Yeah, I'm there day one, and that's on are Valentine's you Day. Are yeah. you seriously going? So within the first week, I'm seeing that movie. Why? I liked Sonic as a kid. All right. Okay. I like Jim Carrey. He hasn't done a character thing for a while. Fair enough. I forgot it was Jim Carrey. Who was yeah. Um, but yeah, so I don't think looking at the lineup of films coming soon that Rise of Skywalker could significantly get more in its run. No. Um, I think it's more than likely it'll stay at its last mm-hmm. position. Comparatively to the spinoffs as well, mm-hmm. Rogue One also passed a billion. So there's five movies now yep. from Disney. Four of the five are in the Bill Club. But Solo. You sweet summer child Solo. <laughs> ooh, ooh, child. I think it was, it's definitely sub 500 mil. I think it was sub 400 mil. I think it was, you said what, 320? It might have been like 380. Okay. So in the 300 million, so. Yeah. From what I remember. Unfortunate timing. Mm -hmm. Came out a couple weeks after Infinity War. Oh, so so, such a bad, such a bad timing. I went up against uh, Deadpool 2 and a John Wick film, I think. And five months after The Last Jedi. Yeah, so Solo could have used the December release. Yeah, nothing, yeah. Yeah, and we did talk about that a little bit on our Solo episode of Jedi Knights, but... Do you still think that seeing how Rise of Skywalker did despite the discourse, um, which again is kind of irrelevant to everything, really, but yeah. for the sake of conversation, uh, do you think Solo probably would have done significantly better still in December? Yeah, oh, totally. Yeah, I think I think that's just a given. Yeah, no other Star Wars movie was released, I believe. Yeah, because Rogue One is also released in December. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I guess it kind of just shows <laughs> how effective that was for Disney. Yeah, so come 2022, when we're apparently due for the next film, I bet you a Baby Yoda doll It's going to be in December. <laughs> it's only two, more than two years away, baby. Yeah. So, there is one final piece of news that I think is legit news. Sure. Because it is a thing that has happened. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Battlefront 2 got its update where we can play as BB-8. I didn't know that. Yeah, I saw this when I was putting the show together a couple hours ago. And I was like, do I have time to try BB-8? I didn't. But I'm absolutely going to do it after we record this. Did you watch any videos of it? Uh, No, but I saw his character model. It's looking good. I mean, probably just looks like BB-8, right? Yeah, but uh, in his like stationary <laughs> screen, he's got the, the thumbs up later. Oh, good. Okay. So Well, A+. Plus. Uh, BB-8 for the Resistance, BB-9E from The Last Jedi. Yeah, also known as BB-8. <laughs> Fair. Um, yeah, so both of those are live now in a new update for Battlefront 2. You do not need the Celebration Edition for those characters. 
Um, Do you need to buy that like twenty dollars thing though? No, not for the characters. Okay. Uh, for the Rise of Skywalker skins and maps, you need the twenty dollars upgrade, um, which again I think is fair considering they've done like two years of post release sure. content for free. Yeah. I still haven't bought that version of the game. No. I might when it's on sale. If when it's on sale, I will buy. Yeah. I'm like, I have Battlefront 2. This is going to get off topic a little bit. But I have Battlefront 2. It's one of those weeks. Yeah, I had Battlefront 2 for my Xbox. Mm -hmm. And I bought it in like 2017. And I do play it actually occasionally still. But I do game more often on my PC now. All right, Mike. And so I'm, I'm thinking like... When was the last time you had to update your drivers? <laughs> I'm thinking like, should I just... Should I just... Double dip? Double dip a little bit. Um, because what? It's like how much money would it be? It would be like 30 bucks. I think brand new, you could probably get, judging by the PlayStation Store and my memory, um, I think you could probably get it for 30, maybe lowest would be 25. But I know for the Celebration Edition, if you it comes with all the DLC, all the new stuff, I think it's 40 flat. Maybe I'll just wait till that's in sale. Yeah. Um, because I, I guarantee you by the time May the 4th rolls around, you're probably going to be able to get the Celebration Edition for, like, maybe 30. So Yeah. Going to have to set up those alerts on, is there any deal done? <laughs> for sure. Uh, there are a few other notable things that got updated in the recent uh, patch. Supremacy and Instant Action are now available on New Planets. Takodana. Okay. Wait, Capital Supremacy? Yes. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, so Takodana has it, Jakku, and Agent Kloss. Oh, Agent Kloss, yeah. Is that from 9? That's the uh, that's the jungle planet that they're on. Oh, from 9. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So yeah, I, I'm assuming because that's from 9 for Agent Kloss, you need the Celebration Edition. Right, because, yeah, it's where the base is. Yeah. But Takodana and Jakku are both available in the base game, so as long as you're connected to the internet and updated, you should be able to play Capital Supremacy on new maps now. That's cool. And they added some new quality of life stuff to like queue into specific eras of Supremacy, which is pretty useful because if you just want to roll like uh, the Republic, do you Clone Wars on Geonosis? You can for Supremacy. Or if you just want to try out Takodana, you can. Wait, so I can choose which map I want to go to? Which era? I think there's two maps for each era now. Yeah, because I was going to... Well, the thing is, I was going to say, they launched Capital Supremacy on Geonosis, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. Yes. And then they added F Felucia. I've, oh, I haven't played enough to know all the maps they have for Capital Supremacy now. Um, but I, I was going to say, what what maps for Capital Supremacy do they have during like the Empire era and like the Rebels? I don't think they have that. I can fact check that. Real quick. Yeah, I'm just going to I I don't know if I have that yet because I don't think I've ever seen that, which makes it interesting that you can choose different eras. Um, I think it would be cooler if you could choose different maps because every time I go and I try to play Capital Supremacy, I always find that it just puts me on Geonosis, <laughs> which is, like, fine. Uh, but I would like to see something different. Um, yeah. Um, so the looks of it, we have... Forced Moon of Endor, Survivors of Endor, oh, okay. um, which are two separate Endor maps. There's two Hoth maps. There is now Jakku, Sullust, Tatooine, and Bespin. For Capital Supremacy? Hold on. This may just be Supremacy. This is just Supremacy, my mistake. Fill more time, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want me to fill some more time? Yes. Uh, Talk about why you love... Who's your favorite go-to hero in Battlefront 2? Okay, so when I play heroes versus villains, now let me just preface this by saying that I don't play Battlefront 2 as much as other people, mm -hmm. which is why I'm not going to buy this this upgrade or anything like that. Um, but when I play heroes versus villains, A, I'm really bad at it because there's a lot of strategy involved. And like I said previously, more than you would expect. Way more than you would expect. I don't play that often. You need to really know the abilities to every character. However, I... Uh, I main Kylo Ren on the dark side. I think he's a cool character. Uh, and then when I play uh, for the light side, 
I enjoy playing as Anakin. I know he's kind of OP. Uh, he's got this one ability that like he's basically invincible, and then he like pushes out with the Force and like destroys a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. I I've fallen many times to that move, and I'm not a fan. Yeah, but I find that like heroes versus villains, like you can't just have like one favorite character. You have to be pretty good at all of them. Yeah, you at least have to have have an alternate. Well, yeah, because because there are just some situations that you can't. Yeah, you can't be certain characters. So it looks like from a YouTube video from the channel The Aussie Jedi, uh, there are, it looks to be no Empire era maps at the moment. That's what I thought. So there is Felucia, like you said, Geonosis, uh, Kamino, Naboo, Mm -hmm. and Kashyyyk. And the Rise of Skywalker ones. Which just got added, yeah. Okay. So. Nice. Um, before we start recording today, one of my friends texted me. He's like, "Hey, you play Battlefront 2, right?" And I was like, "Yes, I do. <laughs> Please buy it." <laughs> so yeah, it's a game that you need to play with with other with other people. Uh, just none of my friends on Xbox play. Yeah, add crossplay and then we can play. Yeah, are you listening, EA? <laughs> add crossplay now. Yeah. So please. That's gonna do it for news this week. Uh, funny enough, I was thinking about this when I was watching the episodes of Clone Wars we're going to discuss after the break. Mm-hmm. Every time I watch that show, it makes me want to play Battlefront. Mm. You want to you be one of the clones? I, like, I just, the vibe, I'm like, man, I want to, like, be in there. I want to have the, the instant action. I want to be strategizing and blowing up droids. Yeah, I mean, the Battlefront games, especially Battlefront 2, does a really good job of immersing you. Into especially the in the Republic era. Oh, yeah. Because, man, I love the clones. Yeah, it looks so good. So... We will take a short break, though. Sure. While we return. When we return. Star Wars Clone Wars. Five episodes. This is where the fun begins. Welcome back. We're now going to talk about the next batch of eps for Star Wars The Clone Wars. <laughs> I like you how you call them batches. Yeah, because yeah. batches of clones. Five, five each. Yeah. Yeah. So this week we watched Season 1, Episode 11, Dooku Captured. Season 1, Episode 19, Storm Over Ryloth. Season 1, Episode 20, Innocence of Ryloth. Season 1, Episode 21, Liberty on Ryloth. Season 2, Episode 1, Holocron Heist. Yes. Uh, I will say once again, we have updated information on what episodes are for what week of the show Mm -hmm. via Twitter and a Google Doc made by Jack Martin. Is the Google Doc shared to the public? Uh, I will ask Jack to make it public. Oh, I And then post it on Twitter. I didn't mean to... Force his hand right there. I thought that it was. Well, I have screenshots of seasons one and season two so far on okay. our Twitter page pinned. That's just a good resource. I think it should be available. Yeah, he should publish that. <laughs> yeah. He, so, should, he needs to slap his name on it, though. Yes, absolutely. Before he does. So this week, uh, again, we're going to just go through the order we watched him in because we are doing chronological order. Yeah, exactly. Despite skipping around to the killer apps. Yeah, so we're, we're only doing the good apps here. Yeah. Uh, Dooku Captured, what do you think of this one? Um, all right, I have notes here. Okay. Uh, I was interested in this one. I think it's a, like an all right episode. My biggest takeaway was just an overall impression of like, I like that we can get in the weeds in like a digestible way. Of like the politics yes. of it all? Yes. Yeah. Because that is super interesting. It is like the pretext for everything that happens. For sure. In, and in the, in the story, so. And they present it in a way that is, again, I think digestible for people of all ages, unlike yeah. the prequels. <laughs> yeah, totally. The The one thing about this this episode, and it might just be, be because of the episode that we watched afterwards, mm-hmm. it felt like it was a kind of a cliffhanger. Yeah? Uh, because I looked it up, yeah. and the episode that like comes after immediately is um, something about uh, like Jar Jar has to go like mediate between like Count Dooku or Hondo and the Jedi and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I can see why Jack Martin took this out. <laughs> took that episode out. So. Yes. <laughs> um I funny enough, I did check out the episode that was the first episode on Jack's guide highlighted terrible. Oh really? Um okay. It was about uh Bail Organa and Jar Jar Binks doing like deliberation somewhere and I was like <laughs> Thanks, Jack. I was entertained, but like, yeah, that was filler. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, what what do you think overall about this episode? Because I do agree, it kind of leaves off on a cliffhanger, but w- 
the conceptual aspect of like Dooku getting captured by pirates and Obi Wan and Anakin having to negotiate. It's very it's very Star Wars Clone Wars. Yeah. It's just like it it to me it seemed like a little bit of filler because we all know what happens. Yeah. Like somehow Count Dooku gets away mm-hmm. and they keep doing this whole cat and mouse kind of game. Yep. Uh but like you said, it's an interesting way to kind of like delve a little bit deeper into the politics behind mm. it. Yeah. Um, I, I thought this episode was fine. I thought it was one of the weaker ones of the five that we watched. Yeah, for sure. It didn't really get us anywhere, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Yeah, and I think as the weeks go on, we're probably going to feel a little more mixed on the episodes that aren't part of a arc. narrative arc. Yeah. Because we do have an arc to talk about for this week. Yeah. Um, But before we get to that... With the Dooku episode, like we said about the politics of it, it was interesting seeing the perspective of pirates in Star Wars being very much playing both sides. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, As they would in, in a real-life scenario. Yeah. Um, and I thought of that part uh, after the the servant drugs the drinks and Obi-Wan and Anakin toast with them and then like they use the Force to swap them out with the mm-hmm. people next to them. It looked weird. It, I was no, like, I was going to say that looked really weird. Yeah, I was like, cool, but... Also, the beginning of this episode, like, they just roll up to Dooku, and he's, like, not expecting them or anything. He's just, like, chilling there, like, meditating. Yeah. And, like, how did that happen? I, how did he? How did they do that without anyone knowing? Mm-hmm. And listeners could be frustrated because that could be explained in an episode that we chronologically didn't we didn't yeah. watch yet. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and just aside from... The required episodes. If I have had extra free time, I have been checking out some of the other ones. Yeah, I have been too. Um, so I, I do like that they flesh out stuff we've seen already, mm-hmm. you know, because for the stuff that I'm going back to, to just see the filler episodes, it's cool. Like um, season one, episode one, um, Ambush, that was Yoda and the Troop of Clones uh, following up on the episode I watched about Jar Jar. <laughs> Was that the next one? Yes, because the um, the Toydarian, uh, that I don't know if they've introduced him anywhere else, but he there was a Toydarian in that episode of um, Jar Jar and Ar- Bill Organa because they went to him like the flappy wing. Yes, yeah, uh, Watto's. Yeah, they went to them because their planet was like on the way to Ryloth, mm-hmm. and they were like, "Hey, there's a horrible thing going on." We need to use your planet as like a base so we can bring resources there. To Ryloth. Yes. Which Very is sort of getting into the next arc. Yeah. Um, so that was a little tease because like I, in that episode I watched, they were talking about the Twi'leks and the, their starving and the oppression on Ryloth. Yeah. And then we dive in. So do we want to talk about the next episode? Sure. Uh, Storm over Ryloth. This episode rules. That was this is my favorite episode we watched this week. This episode is so cool. I I'm, love it. I'm glad we agree because like I, it's we, so cool, dude. I finished Dooku. I was like, okay, that was like Clone Wars. Yeah, it's fine. And then I watched this one. I'm like, oh, this is Star Wars. Yeah, it's it's like really really good. Yeah. What what's your favorite aspect of it? Because it is a lot of the drama focused on Ahsoka, and just sort of the weight of her having to like come into her own in this war. Mm-hmm. And I really liked that about this because when she was doing that initial launch of the mission the first time around, Anakin was like, oh, you got a snips. I was like, in my head, I was like, mental note, Anakin seems like a handoff teacher. And then as the episode goes on, they address that. And like she fails the first time. I'm like, oh, cool development. (laughs) Yeah, I think I think Anakin was definitely testing her. Mm-hmm. and just wanted to see how she would do yeah she's very young like chronologically hasn't really they haven't been together for that long right yeah um w- i really enjoyed that i think that was probably the most interesting part of the episode mm-hmm. um something a little bit more basic though that i thought was really interesting is how detailed they get into the military tactics yeah i think that's so cool see that's what i was just saying before we breaked or took our break the like every time I watch this, especially this episode, I was like, man, I just want to play Battlefront right now. Yeah, because like it is that strategy of like we got to get this point, we got to blow up that gun so we can land our ships and bring in more troops. It just does a good job showing how creative like the the Jedi generals are, in yeah. particular like 
Obi-Wan and Anakin. Yeah, and it's such an interesting like aspect of what the Jedi are because mm-hmm. if you just watch the movies and listen to like even if you just watch the originals, if you like shun the prequels, Obi-Wan says we were guardians of peace. Yeah, peacekeepers. But like from a certain point of these view. These guys are warlords pretty much. From a certain point of view, they were the keepers of the peace, right? Yeah. But like they're doing like legit military tactics like you said. So it's interesting seeing them take that approach of like this is a war and we're commanding an army. It's so creative too. Yeah. Like the whole like bringing the the Republic cruiser yeah. like in on its side. Yeah, that that was really cool. I love that moment like seeing Ahsoka actually figure it out and be like, "Okay, no, we're doing this." Hope it works, but yeah. we're doing this. Because yeah, that does sort of set her up how she was introduced in the movie as sort of being like a foil for Anakin. Definitely. Um, like uh, different side of the same coin. Right. So I really appreciate that about her character and big, what we've big seen so Poe far. Big Poe energy, though. Yeah. That's, for that's, sure. the, that's the thing that I... Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and again, through that episode, mm-hmm. really, I'm really liking Anakin. <laughs> yeah, he rules. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm really warming up to the whole idea. I'm, I'm fully prepared to walk away from our experience with this show with Anakin being a top three Star Wars character for me. Really? Even, like, with the movies considering? Yes, because I do kind of like him in episode three. Yeah, me too. So I do kind of like him in all the movies, to be honest. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also like how the Techno Union Army... I know. ...is now... <laughs> oh, I can't believe that. Uh, that was great. And that, like, guy that has to, like... What was it, Wat Tambor or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We get more of him later on in this arc. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Storm Over Ryloth, great episode. Sets up the beginning of this arc. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it might be my favorite episode of the arc just because it does get really in the weeds. It is my favorite episode of the arc. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I, I always like the space battles. Yeah. yeah. And they do it well in this because they like... In Star Wars, we're so used to seeing just the dogfighting of the space battles. But like you said, we get to see, like, the tactics behind it, too. Right. And I think that's really entertaining. I think that's the coolest part. Yeah, because it's like you're playing chess, and I like seeing the moves and the strategy behind it. I just like the the shots of, like, the oppo- like the, the Separatist uh, commander, mm-hmm. like, shouting out orders yeah. while you know what they're thinking about on the Republic side and, like, mm-hmm. vice versa. I think yeah. that's very interesting and super cool. And I did love the Star Trek esque, um, and I know like nothing is of Star Trek aside from a couple of the movies. Uh, conversation between Anakin and the Separatist guy, like on the deck. oh yeah, <laughs> in the hall, yeah whatever that is. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Um, then yeah, another instance of somebody crashing a Star Destroyer <laughs> into some base. To Just not at light speed though. Yeah, I was also thinking of um, in Rogue One the hammerhead technique. That yeah crash in spaceships it's fe- it's it's definitely an it's effective, effective strategy uh but we set up the end of this episode uh ahsoka and anakin do their job they clear out the blockade so that obi-wan mace windu can uh show up with troops reinforcements to and invade Rilo. yes to help the oppressed it's a twi'lek or twi'lek uh it's I don't know. It's interchangeable. I've always said Twi'lek. I always said Twi'lek. So we will say Twi'lek for the rest of the episode. You know what we're talking about. Um, Innocence of Ryloth. Yeah, this is more of the ground assault Mm -hmm. of what happened after that big space battle. Yes. Um, This one's still good. I enjoyed this episode. Um, I, I, I I think I was more invested on the the two clones that found the child than anything else in the episode yeah those big mandalorian energy yeah right there. <laughs> finding the kid uh seeing the like the war-torn world from that level mm-hmm. uh effective yeah i think uh, you know this this was one of the weaker ones for me yeah me too to be honest i think the the whole b plot with the twi'lek like the girl that they find i think that was cool mm-hmm. um but other than that, I wasn't really impressed. But. Yeah, it was like standard fare, you know? Yeah. I, I do I do like how it humanized the clones a little bit more. Yeah, and I I wanted to have this conversation. Is it weird seeing this stuff and like really like getting an attachment to the persona of the clone, I guess, and then like, man, you're gonna ruin it all. 
What do you? Oh, uh, yeah. You're gonna kill everyone. <laughs> well, it's not their fault, really. Yeah, it's like in their programming, but yeah, it it's just I think it's an interesting. I don't know. It's just a, it's it's an interesting thing that George Lucas poses to us. Like, yeah. what what is like a, what's a droid really like? Yeah, you have these clones fighting droids, but on some levels they're just as, they're they're just as the, the same, same thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I think the the first, um, I think we talked about this last week. The the film sort of presents it that way more than the movies do, right? Because I was shocked that like nobody really cared about their fellow comrades dying, like in um, Rookies, I think, defending the base, and that guy gets eaten by a worm. You're just like, ah, damn, all right. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's in their program. Yeah, though. exactly. Yeah. So I like that portrayal of the clones as a, a yeah. being. I also like how the girl at the end of this episode helps free all the other Twi'leks mm-hmm. who are captured. Or whatever. Feel good moment. It is a feel good moment. Yeah. Uh, Liberty on Ryloth. This is a good one. Yeah. Also, uh, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to jump like right to the end or anything. But it really isn't at the end. Yeah, go for it. I'm fine. Just talking highlights with these apps. Uh, what's his name? Something Sindula. Oh, I'm blanking on names, man. All right, but the the uh, rebel leader that they the Jedi Mace Windu is like, I'm gonna recruit this guy and his army or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is, she he is related. In some way, to Harrison Dula, main character of Star Wars Rebels. That's very cool. Yeah, I don't really know the exact relation because I haven't watched all of this yet. But mm-hmm. I would assume that, that it's the same thing, and I know that Hera's like dad or something is in the Clone Wars. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm really interested to progress through the rest of the series and eventually get into Rebels as well to see like what kind of st- like arc and story they tell within this universe because while it is canon in my head it still feels like its own thing right um which i'm fine with because like several other interests of mine involve like s- multiple timelines of things right so uh as far as what we've seen so far i'm very in on a lot of this and i'm kind of surprised that like especially what we were talking about with the tactics and this entire arc of like prisoners of war pretty much it's still a kids show for everything in mind you know it deals with a lot of really heavy subjects yeah in like an approachable way and it's still it doesn't really like hide away from some of the stuff you know no like that especially with uh innocence of of ryloth that like little girl yeah when she walked into that uh house and got the doll I was like, oh, that's terrifying. Yeah. Like, that's so dark. I know. And, like, this is a children's show. To be fair, Cartoon Network was the edgier of the three yeah. cable networks Yeah, and, and back thank, in the day. Thank God for it, because yeah. it made a really great TV show. And Definitely. A lot of meaning, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, it was cool to see Mace Windu do some stuff, too, because that was kind of the first time we got to see him do anything yeah. <laughs> so far. The voice actor definitely does not sound like Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. Uh, different voice actor because in the film it was but yeah you can't get him for everything no it doesn't do everything uh do you have anything else to say on the ryloth arc that's good yeah yeah i enjoyed it i I liked it as our first real arc yeah overall as like an arc too i'm cool with just a lot of arcs in this thing because it feels like many movies you know that's what i think that's what it ends up becoming yeah and i'm excited to get to the next one (laughs) yeah so uh, we did dip into season two for our last episode of this week for our watch along. Now, this is actually part of an arc itself, I believe. It is. It's the beginning of an arc Yeah. that we are going to be watching, I believe, in its entirety next week. Yeah, I think it's only a three episode arc. Mm-hmm. Uh, Holocron Heist mm-hmm. introduces Cad Bane. Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter. And his team of bounty hunters. Yeah. What do you think of this one? This one was cool. Yeah. Um, I like the whole concept of him taking the senators hostage and like Palpatine having to like advocate for these people that he's going to end up like screwing over. Yeah. In, again, like, a, in, like a year. <laughs> yeah. More negotiation, which is interesting, at least the way they write it in this show. Mm-hmm. Uh, seeing a new character introduced to the roster of bounty hunters. I do remember the premiere of this season again, when the show was originally airing, 
because I remember they were hyping up season two so much, and then like Cad Bane was in all the ads, mm-hmm. and like even the the trailers had like a red overlay over everything. It's like, oh, we're darker this season. Well, let's get to it. Yeah, like I'm ready. Yeah, for sure. Because I, as of right now, we're done with season one. Yeah, I don't think we go back for we? yeah for our watch along. No more season one episodes. Interesting. Unless there's a random one somewhere down the line. Feels like we didn't really watch it, but we yeah. watched the good parts. Yeah. So uh, season two kicks off with a title that has the word heist in it. And listeners of the show and Mike, you know I love heists. Was it really that much of a heist, though? That's where I'm going with this. Yeah. Uh, I don't really understand the title. <laughs> it's not a heist. Like, yeah, he wanted a holocron, but like, where's the heist aspect, you know? There is no heist aspect. Yeah. And I do understand that you have to make a concession for, like, a 20, 22-minute episode of a show aimed at children it versus that episode of Mandalorian that was a legit heist. You got to make it, you know, appealing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm on the same page as you. Like, it was a cool episode. Yeah. Digging the, like, continuing establishment of what's going on in this universe outside of the main conflict like with the bounty hunters yeah i think it's fun that we can just watch um like little vignettes of things that happen in this Mm -hmm. universe definitely um also (laughs) i wanted to like padme to use that lightsaber in a more like meaningful way (laughs) other than just like breaking anakin's like like whatever bonds yeah yeah i mean i'm sure we're gonna get more like well from what i know we are going to be getting like more interesting other characters yeah. using lightsabers for the first time or n- like new races using lightsabers, which is exciting. Cool. But yeah, this is Padme may do it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, as far as what we've seen so far, this is like an all right one. Yeah. It's fine. So uh, do you have any final thoughts on the episodes you watched this week? One thing I didn't mention from Liberty on Ryla. Did you notice that they were writing blurgs? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. Yes, because that was also in the um, one of the side episodes I watched too. I oh. saw in the background there was one sleeping. I was like, "Hey, <laughs> the thing." Yeah, no, I was like, I was like, oh, th- "Those are the things." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's cool. I love seeing the uh, the fi- just the fact that like we've had this conversation before, but since everything is connected, seeing the things pop up. Oh yeah, it's very cool to see all that. Even like the obscure things popping up again, mm-hmm. making them less obscure, but like you feel in on it. Yeah. So it's cool, for sure. Um, next week, we're watching six episodes, cause we're get this next week, two arcs. Well, the continuation of the one that we started. Yes, but I think there's still th- three more episodes in that arc. Right. Yeah. So next week, uh, pretty easy. I know we've been hopping around a little bit. Pretty straightforward. Season two, episode two, three, five. Six, seven, and eight. Okay. We're so. skipping episode four. Yeah. So if you want to follow along, those are the ones. Uh, we will tweet those on our Twitter at Jedi Knights JC as well as the handy little diagram. If you do want to see what's highlighted as required viewing, filler, terrible. <laughs> thank God for Jack Martin, everybody. Yeah. Tweet at him and thank him for this because it's great. Hashtag save Jack. <laughs> I still want to see that. <laughs> Hashtag that save Jack. <laughs> Um, that's gonna do it though. That is this week in Star Wars. Yeah, I think that was a good app. Yeah. So, uh, Mike, if people want to find you somewhere online, where can they find you? You can follow me on Twitter at Mike P Connors. Very nice. Uh, if you want to follow follow me on Twitter, it's at Chris N Buckley. Same as my Instagram. Uh, we have a Ooh. Discord. We have a Discord that's linked in the description. We do have a Discord. So if you have Battlefront Two on PS4, and you're free this week. Hit me up on that thing. Literally, literally, if the same thing, but if you have an Xbox, let's get it. <laughs> yeah, because, man, I, I'd love to have a full squad just once. Yeah, or just play Heroes versus Villains. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we do have this show available in multiple formats. If you're watching us, if you saw Mike give his horribly... <laughs> inconsistent uh measurement of how tall baby yoda is oh yeah well don't that's only for you youtube viewers yeah you can see that on youtube uh if you want to listen to us though we are on podcast services like apple Podcasts, spotify 
If you do listen on an Apple podcast, consider leaving a ranking or oh, yeah. review of the episode or the show in general. That helps us out. Helps us out big time. Uh, and yeah, that is this week. I hope next week, I hope there's no leaks for Project Luminous, but I hope there's buzz. I hope we have some rumors to discuss. Yeah. Because we've been doing some more rumor talk lately, Mm -hmm. and I'm excited to see. Because things start to leak around this time Yeah, for things that are Star Wars related. Mm -hmm. uh, Disney can't keep it all in the bag. No, they can't. And the road to celebration is going to be interesting. Where, yeah, that's in April. It is. (laughs) It's not not stopping. You know, I wanted to go this year. Where is it this year? Uh, Yeah, that's a good question. I (laughs) I think maybe like Anaheim. Okay, it was Anaheim last year and the year before, I think. I think they did two in a row at Anaheim. Maybe maybe it's at Anaheim again. Yeah. But um that'll do it. So until next week. I'm gonna look up. Hold on. Okay, we're filling air again. <laughs> you got it now you have to fill me in. Okay. Um It's in Anaheim. It's in Anaheim. Fantastic. Wait, it says it's coming August. I thought it was coming in I thought it was April. Oh. Star Wars celebration, August twenty seventh to twenty twenty. Or er, August 27th, the 30th, 2020. Well, looks like we're a ways off then. Never mind. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're probably getting news. Project Luminous is going to be a day. Yeah, it's going to be a big day. So until then, though, we're fine. Everything's fine. How are you? May the force be with you. General Kenobi. <laughs>